as thick and red as dragon. He sure can fly. It's Darby the Dragon. Darby, Darby, Darby the Dragon. Darby, Darby, Darby the Dragon. Bet you can guess without any hints. It's Darby, Darby the Dragon Prince. Hey, I wonder what that is. Wow. I've never seen anything like this. I've got to show Sparkle. Sparkle, where do you see what I found? Meet me at the castle. You bet, Darby. What did you find, Darby? Come on, show it to me. Say please. Please. Wow, it's the best. Let me see it. No, it's mine. I found it. I just want to hold it. Hey! Aha! It's not fair. You're bigger than me. Ugh. I wish you were small. <sighs> Oops. It must be a magic wand. It granted your wish. I'm sorry, Sparkle. I didn't mean it. I wish for Sparkle to grow large again. I think the wand's all out of wishes. What are we going to do? I'll take this key. We might need it. Don't worry, Sparkle. We'll make you big again. Don't worry, Sparkle. We'll make you big again. I've got that shrinking feeling. Well, well, what have we here? Looks like you wished for something you wished you hadn't wished for. Only the wizard can help you now. Before you visit him, go to the castle library. Get the Book of Dragon Spells. Whenever life's a little stale, a magic journey never fails. Pack your bag, let's hit the trail. Follow me to Dragondale. Follow me to Dragondale. You'd better get that Book of Dragon Spells from the Castle Library. I'll stay with you, Darby, no matter what. I think we have some adventuring ahead of us. Hi, Hi Mom. Mom. Dear, dear, you two have gotten yourselves into a royal pickle. You'll have to travel far and wide to solve this problem. These books will help you learn more about our kingdom. Whenever you pick one, I'll read it to you. It's locked. Wow! Fire potion! Great! Now I can breathe fire! Now that I'm small, all I can breathe is... Sparks! This doesn't look like a dragon spell book. This doesn't look like a dragon spell book. This doesn't look like a dragon spell book.
Would you like me to read you a story? Whenever you pick one, I'll read it to you. A Tale of Dragondale King Jeremy was a very good man, but a very bad king. He sang silly songs all day long and hid under the bed whenever he heard the word dragon. His kingdom had many troubles. Food would not grow. Elves were fighting with dwarves. And of course, there was the dragon problem. Elves were fighting with dwarves. Food would not grow. Had many troubles. If you don't go to Fernwood Forest and fight the evil dragon, he was told, you'll be a total failure as king. Dragon? Me? said Jeremy. But I'm right in the middle of a song. But I'm right in the middle of a song. Jeremy rode to the forest, shaking with fear. Then he saw the dragon's camp and smiled. This is how you live? Sleeping under the stars? No cares, no responsibilities? If I lived here, why, I could play and sing all day long. I hate it, sighed the dragon. No cares, no responsibilities. I want to make the kingdom a better place. But people think dragons are evil. Indeed, Jeremy sighed. And they think the king should fight them. Does that mean... Yes, said the king. They want me to fight you. Jeremy and the dragon rode to the castle for the big battle. Perhaps if you pumped some water up from that river, your crops would grow, said the dragon. Hmm, replied the king. I never thought of that. They passed some bickering dwarves and elves. Perhaps if the king listened to both sides, the fighting would stop, the dragon said. Hmm, and double hmm, thought Jeremy. People flocked to the castle to watch the great battle. A hundred trumpets blasted. Jeremy and the dragon charged. But at the last instant, the king had his very first good idea ever. Psst, he whispered to the dragon. Maybe you and I could trade places. The king, psst. A dragon king, the people gasped. Oh no. But soon crops were growing tall and green. Dwarves were playing with elves, and the people liked their new king so much, they named their kingdom Dragondale. Dragondale. And as for Jeremy, well, you just might meet him on the road someday, and he just might sing you a song. Please give him a coin so he won't forget to eat. Jethro Giant and the Honeybees there once was a mighty giant named Jethro, who was afraid of nothing at all. Well, almost nothing. Bees! What if they sting me? Get them away from me! Bees! 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 One morning, after working hard for seven long minutes, Jethro did what giants do best. He took a nap. As he slept, a storm began to brew. Lightning sizzled in the sky. The wind roared like an angry dragon. But Jethro only snored and snored. Like an angry dragon. Crack! The tree! It's going to fall on Jethro! shouted the bear. We've got to wake him! Crack! 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 Now it's easier to hide the moon in your shoe than to wake a sleeping giant. Wake up! boomed the bear. Wake up! shrieked the shrew. Wake up! Wake up! 
Wake up! Still, Jethro snored like the thunder. I know what to do, buzzed a passing honeybee. What Jethro needs is a nice, sweet, friendly... Sting! Ow! My toe! cried the giant, very much awake. Yipes! A bee! Yipes! A tree! Jethro looked up to see the huge tree toppling toward him. He jumped aside just in time. Jethro looked up to see the huge tree toppling toward him. He jumped aside just in time. You saved my life, the giant told the little bee. And from that day on, Jethro spent his days feeding the bees of the forest. They especially like his jelly. They say it's the best in Dragondale. The Two Trolls Once there were two brothers who loved to argue from morning till night. No, we don't. Yes, we do! No, we don't! These trolls argued about everything. The roundness of a ball, the sweetness of sugar, even the hardness of a rock. It's hard, but it's soft for a rock, so it's soft. Hard! Soft! Hard! 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 Their very favorite arguing place was far away field. Look, a pink moth. You mean purple butterfly? No, I mean moth on that clover. Clover? Ha! Try shamrock. Clover? Ha! Clover? Ha! Clover? Ha! Clover? Ha! One day, Solwyn the wizard was walking past Faraway Field when he heard the trolls. It's a tree. It's a bush. It's a tree. It's a bush. He decided to try a little magic. It's a bush. It's a tree. It's a bush. It's a bush. It's a tree. It's a tree. What is more important than anything? Solwyn asked. Being, Being right. right. The trolls replied at once. I can prove for all time which of you is right and which is wrong. Shall I? Oh, yes, yes said the trolls. Solon cast a magic spell. I'll be back tomorrow, he told them. The trolls tried to say goodbye, but suddenly neither one could make a sound. The wizard had taken their voices. A silent troll is a miserable troll is a miserable troll, a silent troll. Or so they thought. With nothing to argue about, the trolls began to notice things they'd never noticed before. Colors and sounds and smells, the cool breeze tickling their skin. Or so they thought. With nothing to argue about, the trolls began to notice things they'd never noticed before. Colors and sounds and smells, the cool breeze tickling their skin. Soon, they were running and dancing in the field. They felt the sun. They tasted the berries. They smelled the flowers. And every time they looked at each other, they silently laughed and laughed. The next day, Solwyn took the spell away. What is more important than anything? He asked the trolls again. Playing in the field with my brother. They said at once. Well, well, I guess you're both right nodded the wizard. And the two brothers became best friends forever and ever. Or at least for a few days, which is a long time for trolls to be quiet. <laughs>